Hi guys, this is Arya from EduRecker. Today's demo session is all about explaining blockchain in such a way that even a beginner can have a grasp on the technology after attending this session. Now before we begin, could you guys please post a confirmation in the chat box as to whether I'm audible or not? Okay, so it seems John is ready, Hanish is ready, Achint is ready, and the rest seem to be ready too. Now before we begin today's session, let me give you guys a quick overview of the topics I intend to cover today. We'll be going over the history of blockchain and what exactly is a blockchain. Then we'll compare a traditional transaction with a blockchain transaction. We'll also be discussing how blockchain actually works under the hood in your computer. Then in the end, we'll see the benefits of blockchain technology and also go through a demo transaction of Bitcoin. Okay, so let's begin. In the last eight years, the word blockchain and Bitcoin have gone from being a fad or a tech jargon to words everyone wants to know about regardless of what industry they're in. A lot of this can be attributed to the meteoric increase of cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin. Five years ago, in June 2013, Bitcoin's value fell to $70. On Friday, October 20th, it was worth 80 times that at $5,600 each. However, what most industry bigwigs and technical people are interested in is not the Bitcoin or cryptocurrency aspect, but rather the underlying blockchain technology and the impact it can have. Now, before we delve into the mechanics of the technology, let's discuss a bit of history regarding it. So, the idea of a decentralized and distributed peer-to-peer -peer network dates back to early 1991. A paper was released on the topic of distributed ledger technology, also commonly known as DLT, which proposed the idea of a distributed networking system for the bookkeeping of transactions. However, people didn't really understand the value of the technology and neither did we have the means to apply this idea at a global scale. Almost 18 years later, with huge advances in both computer science and cryptography, a group or person under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto released the Bitcoin blockchain white paper, which described a peer-to-peer -peer transaction network that was owned by no central authority. In a line, the blockchain can be described as a tamper-proof distributed ledger that is capable of securely recording all transactions that occur. The blockchain technology allows for a lot of solutions to be built on top of it as it eliminates the need for an intermediary who is prone to human error and fraud. As a system, it eliminates the need for a separate ledger, allowing for one single ledger that is virtually impossible to alter. Moreover, one of the biggest benefits of blockchain is the fact that it is transparent. Each party in the blockchain network is able to access the ledger when necessary. Now, while a lot has been said about the fact that Bitcoin is risky, this is more to do with the volatility of its value as opposed to the technology itself. Blockchain is extremely secure and all transactions have a complex validation process. For a transaction to take place, there must be consensus from all members. Once a transaction takes place, it is permanently recorded and cannot be deleted. This is just one of the benefits of blockchain. Blockchain can also enable enterprise to lower their transactional cost by removing the need for a human intermediary for each transaction. It also removes the cost of any potential errors too. Further. The blockchain ensures that all transactions occur at a much faster pace with a higher rate of efficiency. Now as you guys know, the most well known use of blockchain currently is cryptocurrency and that is primarily due to the fact that people do not completely trust their governments and banks. By using cryptocurrency, people feel a lot more secure in knowing exactly where their money is going and who it is going to. However, cryptocurrency is only the tip of the iceberg. People are just beginning to explore the technology and the future holds the potential for major social impact. For instance, Consensus, a software company, recently launched a $50 million in-house venture capital fund to back up startups that are using the blockchain technology to solve global social issues such as refugee assistance, distributed energy and supply chain tracing. Okay, so to get a deeper understanding, let's compare a blockchain transaction with a traditional transaction. Suppose our friend Bob wants to buy a cake from Alice. Traditionally, this transaction will take a lot of steps where Bob isn't actually going to Alice's shop to pay her the money. So let's say Bob decides to pay via PayPal. So he logs on to his PayPal account via his computer and initiates a transaction. PayPal is notified about the same and queries Bob's registered Visa on their server. Visa is now notified about this request from PayPal and initiates a transaction with Bob's bank account. Bob's bank checks if he has sufficient funds for the transaction and then moves on to transferring the money through some other intermediary, for example, a clearance guy. Now this clearance guy goes to Alice's bank to complete the transaction and she finally receives the money and sends the cake to Bob. 
Now, some of you guys must have realized that such a simple transaction of buying a cake is miserably contrived under the hood. Above that, intermediaries like PayPal, Visa, Bob's Bank, and the clearance guy are all going to take a cut from the principal amount in the name of a transaction fee. On a blockchain network, things work a lot differently. If Bob were to commit the same transaction using a blockchain network, it would be much simple and straightforward. He simply commits the transaction on the network. The transaction gets represented as a block and gets broadcasted to the entire network. Parties participating in the network run a consensus algorithm to check the validity of the transaction. After the validation of the block is added to the chain of transactions, Alice receives her money. It's really easy to notice the simplicity out here. The only thing separating Bob and Alice is the network resulting in minimal transaction fees and faster transaction rates. It is key to understand that blockchain is a decentralized and distributed network. Essentially, if something is centralized, there's a single point that does all the work involved in any given action. On the flip side, if something is decentralized, there are multiple points that do the same work. Think about it in this way. The US government is split into both centralized and decentralized parties. In this case, the federal government is centralized. This is because it resides in Washington DC and all decisions are made from this particular location. On the other hand, state governments and legislatures are decentralized because there are 50 spread throughout the United States. The states must work in tandem in order to be a cohesive unit, while the federal government works as a single unit. Okay, so it seems we have a first question of the day. Hanish is asking, on a decentralized network like blockchain, who is the minimal transaction fee awarded to? Well, Hanish, that's a really good question. I'll try explaining it from a blockchain perspective. So if you remember, I had mentioned that every transaction is stored in a block and broadcasted to the entire network. Now, everybody on the network tries to validate the transaction in an acceptable manner. The first person on the network to validate the transaction is rewarded with the transaction fee, which is also a predefined amount called a block reward. This not only generates more cryptocurrency to be traded, but also keeps the validating person satisfied as a lot of resources are required to validate the transaction using the consensus algorithm. We'll get back on the topic of consensus in a short while, but for now, I hope I've ans answered your question, Hanish. Okay, so now that we've discussed how a blockchain transaction works, let's see what happens under the hood in a computer when you initiate a transaction on a blockchain network. So when Bob decides to send Alice the money, he publicly broadcasts his intent to the network. But how is the network supposed to believe the integrity of the message? Anyone on the network could have just broadcasted the intent without Bob's consent. This is where the first bit of cryptography comes into play. The way this problem is solved is by generating a unique digital signature for every transaction. Now, in the actual world, your signature looks the same almost every time. But this is detrimental in terms of a computer as anybody could just copy paste your sign if it's the same all the time. To solve this problem, we use asymmetric cryptography. Let me show you all what that actually looks like. So when Bob decides to send Alice four bitcoins, he generates a digital signature. This digital signature is generated using a function which takes in the message and Bob's private key as the arguments. Now, since the message in practicality should be different every time and only Bob knows his private key, the signature generated will be unique every time, making it almost impossible to replicate without knowing both the message and the private key. Now, the message is decrypted on Alice's side using a similar function that takes in the message, signature and Alice's public key as the argument. If a wrong signature was provided with the message, the function would just throw an error. After Bob commits the transaction to the network, the transaction is put in a block and broadcasted through the network as you guys can see out here. Every peer participating in the network can view the transaction and attempt at validating it. Transaction validation is a very unique process when talking about a blockchain network. On a blockchain network, every peer has a personal copy of the ledger and all these ledgers are kept in sync. So suppose when Bob broadcasts the transaction that he pays four bitcoins to Alice, how can he be sure that everybody wrote down the same thing on their own personal ledgers? So blockchain uses a mechanism called consensus, which is implemented through a consensus algorithm to solve this problem. Talking about the Bitcoin blockchain, the consensus algorithm is called a proof of work. At a high level, Bitcoin offers computational work as a measure of trust. I'll take a moment to explain what that exactly means. It involves this thing called a cryptographic hash function. The general idea that we build to is that if you use computational work as a basis for which ledger to trust, you could separate out the fraudulent transactions as computationally infeasible. This is actually a very cool idea. And if you understand this, you understand the heart of Bitcoin and every other blockchain network out there. Okay, so first things first, what's a hash function? A hash function is a function that takes in any kind of message 
as an input and produces a hash or a digest of the message. This message is in binary and generally something like 256 characters long. Point of the message is to look random, but in actuality it isn't. The output of a hash function changes completely even with a single change of a character in the message, but it is important to understand that the same message will produce the same hash every single time. The hash function being used in the Bitcoin protocol is called SHA-256 and the way the hash changes even with a single change is completely unpredictable. Now this hash function is not just any hash function, it's a cryptographic hash function and that means it's infeasible to compute in a reverse direction. So suppose I were to give you a 256 bit long input of ones and zeros and ask you to find out the exact message that would generate that same output, you would have no better method than to just guess and check. So that means you would have to go through around 2 raised to 256 guesses. You could probably say that you could get into the weeds of the function and reverse engineer the whole thing, but no one has ever actually done that. Interestingly also, there's no cold hard proof that it's impossible to reverse engineer, but a huge amount of modern cyber security is based on cryptographic hash functions and the way they behave. So how does this work for blockchain? Well, someone comes and tells you that if you take all the transactions in a ledger and add a special number to it at the end called a nonce, and apply SHA-256 on it, the first 30 bits are all zeros. So how hard would you think would it be to guess that number? Just to give you guys an idea, the probability is 1 by 2 raised to 30, which is in simpler terms 1 in a billion. And since SHA-256 is a cryptographic hash function, the only way for you to find out that number is by actually guessing and checking. So you almost certainly had to go through a billion guesses to come to the output. Once you find the output, it's really easy. You just run the hash and see if it gives the same message as input. This is called proof of work. The way the process is intrinsically tied to every transaction on the ledger makes blockchain immutable. If you were to go and change one of the transactions in the ledger, it would completely change the hash and everybody on the network would immediately know that something fishy is going on. So whichever ledger has the most computational work put to it is the one that can be trusted in the end. After the block is validated through consensus, a block header is generated. This block header contains the hash of the previous block, thus creating a chain of blocks over time, giving the technology the name blockchain. Anybody can query any block by just looking up the block hash, and this is how blockchain serves as an immutable ledger of who owns what. Okay, so let's sum up what we learned about blockchain through its transactions. First things first, we saw how digital signatures are created for every blockchain transaction using asymmetric cryptography. These transactions, once encrypted and secured, are broadcast publicly over the network. Next, these transactions are verified and validated by miners who use a consensus algorithm as a basis of their trust. Lastly, once validated, these transactions are stored on a public ledger which can be queried by anyone by just looking up the block hash. To conclude our session for today, let's go through the potential benefits of blockchain. So blockchain lets us settle deals in real time. Secondly, a lot of money is saved as intermediaries are cut down and transaction fees are avoided. Above that, transactions are completely secure as your information is owned by no central authority like a bank and its process of validation and increasing currency blockchain also provides residency, which is extremely important for any network to work in the market. Above that, blockchain transactions are immutable and can serve as a single source of truthful list of transactions. Also, transactions can be committed completely anonymously, which is a big boon. Okay guys, now it's time I give you guys a quick demo on SHA-256 and normal blockchain transactions. So if you go to this site called blockchain.addresso.ch, you'll see that you can have a SHA-256 demo. Now, if you put in a message as the input and generate the hash, you see that the hash makes no sense at all and it's almost impossible to guess what the message was. But the important thing to note out here that even if you change one single character in the message and generate the hash again, the hash generated has no connection to the previous hash, even though there's only one difference and that's a single character. But if you were to go and make the message same again and generate the hash, it'll always provide the same hash. Now, let me give you guys a demo on the transaction. So suppose these are four wallets out here and they belong to four different people. So suppose wallet one out here belongs to Alice and wallet four out here belongs to Bob. So suppose Bob wanted to send some money to Alice for the cake. So all he has to do is spend. He'll select that he's sending his money to wallet one and he'll set the amount. Suppose we're sending 40 rupees for the cake and he'll save it. 
Now, in a proper blockchain network, you have to wait for the transaction to be mined, but out here you can just pressing mine out here. As the transaction gets mined, you can see that the wallet four money has been deducted and the wallet one money has been added. So we see that the transaction is committed and you can find the block header hash out here and all the regarding transaction related details in the block. So that was the end of the demo. Now moving forward with the session, I think it's right to assume I've caught your attention. And I think you're fascinated as I am by blockchain technology and would love to learn more. At Edureka, we teach blockchain in a very structured and modular way. You'll be going through the beginner level topics like Bitcoin blockchain architecture and even advanced topics like Ethereum smart contracts, Hyperledger and multi-chain. Edureka provides live instructor led training. Leaving that aside, Edureka also provides a 24 seven support team that is there to guide you through your technical and non-technical issues that are related to the course. Once you enroll for a batch, you'll be provided with a lifetime access to Edureka's carefully crafted learning management system. The learning management system will contain all your class recordings, presentation, PDF, and information regarding your project. At Edureka, once you enroll for a course, you can even reassign your batch at your own convenience. If you're not satisfied with a single go-through of the course, you can even sign up for future batches n number of times. Classes that you miss are recorded and uploaded to your learning management system just to make sure you really never miss out on anything. Okay guys, I hope I did justice in explaining blockchain to you guys. I hope you took away something valuable from the session today. That's it from me. Goodbye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!